So you had intentions to, to at least have oral sex with her. Yeah. And how old did she tell you that she was? She said going on 14. This video contains the interview of a predator who was caught on his first attempt by agents from the show to catch a predator. In October of 2007, ex-reserve police officer and college student Michael Patterson's life was hitting a rough patch. The 24-year-old was not only going through a divorce, but his pride was still stinging from being fired after illegally putting police lights on his car and impersonating a police officer. Like many people, Patterson turned to the internet for companionship. Instead of finding people of his own age to chat with, Patterson discovered a 13-year-old girl who was actually a decoy. Not being experienced in such activities, he didn't draw things out like most predators. Instead, after chatting only one day, Patterson hopped in his car for a five-hour drive to engage in activities that he should never have considered with a minor. When he arrived, one officer made a poor decision and tasered Patterson, even though he was standing still at the time. Although only one prong managed to latch correctly, Patterson's dramatic screams made his case one of the most well-known from the show. Here, one more time. We're going to cuff you up front, okay? Same admonishment. <sighs> yes, King. We're just going to cuff him up front. Put this one on the hook line, cuff on it. I got it. Right, sit down. Did you get hurt? Here, cuff him up. Let's see him. See your arm, buddy. Hold your arm up here. You got any other wounds or anything? No, no I don't think so. You sure? Many predators are able to put on a mask of calm and attempt to charm their way out of trouble. Patterson is different. He's already breathing hard, and he gives the impression that he isn't the type to hold up well under questioning. Distraught, Parker Bell fired a 40 caliber pistol into the floor, sending the room, which included several civilians, into a panic as people duck for cover.
to stay in here. No, he can go. That's fine. Brought you water if you want something to drink there. Okay. Name is Michael Patterson. Yes. Michael, my name is Ken Gillingham and I'm an agent with the Kentucky Bureau of Investigation and you're here at the Bowling Green Police Department. Turn on a tape recorder so that we have an accurate representation of what we talk about here tonight. Today's date is Sunday, October 21st, 2007. The time is now approximately 2.45 a.m. Present are Agent Ken Gillingham with the Kentucky Bureau of Investigation and Michael Patterson. Mr. Patterson, I've talked to you and you do know that this tape recorder is being turned on to record our conversation. Yes. What's your full name? Michael Joseph <clears throat> Patterson. And what's your date of birth? What's your home address? What's your social security number? How tall are you? 5'11". Weight? 195 pounds. Brown hair and... and hazel blue eyes. Married, single, divorced. Well, I'm going through a divorce now. Still legally married? Yeah. And where are you employed? Well, nowhere as of the weekend. Well, I work through um, through private investigation services. The card was in my wallet. I didn't know who that guy was that I was talking to, and I didn't give him accurate information. I'm, I was a police officer. Okay. But you, or you say you... I, I, work, I do, like, private investigations. Okay. Through uh, Lieutenant O'Day from Hebron Police. Lieutenant, so you, it's a, just put Lieutenant O'Day Investigation Service. Patterson's actions have just destroyed any career he may have been pursuing in law enforcement. These consequences haven't occurred to him yet. But over the next few days, he's going to have to face how much he has lost. I just do that part-time right now because I go to school at Purdue. And what type of private investigations do you do? Just 
confidential, you know, con- confidential, discreet investigations. Give me an example. Cheating. Cheating spouses. Fraud, fr- insurance fraud. Um, workers' comp fraud, workers things like camp, that. Yeah. So you're, you're not a sworn police officer. I was with Hebron, and then that went down. What happened there? Oh, it was a traffic violation. I violated their SOP, their standard standard operating procedures. I uh, I went out and I had I got some blue red lights and I put them in my car. It was thrown out of court, so they dismissed me for that. But it was thrown out. How long ago was that? Uh, just about like a month ago, about a month ago. And do you have any children? No. Was it all right if I call you Michael? Yeah. Mike? What do you go by? Mike. Mike. Obviously, if you've been in law enforcement in the past, uh, you're probably familiar with your Miranda warning, your statement of rights. Yeah. And you know that before I can ask you any questions, I'm required to advise you of your rights. Statement of your rights, or you may remain silent. That anything that you say may be used against you in a court or other proceedings. But you have the right to consult an attorney before you make any statement or answer any question, and you may have your attorney with you during the questioning. You may request the court to appoint an attorney for you if you cannot afford to hire one, and you may stop the questioning at any time by refusing to answer any further questions or requesting to consult with your attorney. You understand those rights that I've read to you? Yes. Okay. So right there. Damn, I don't know how they did that. But okay, you've had the rights read to you, and did you understand them? And then the second portion down here is a waiver of those rights. It says, having the above statement of my rights read and explained to me, and fully understanding them, I hereby waive these rights. At the time is now two fifty one a.m on October 21st, 2007, and I do this freely and voluntarily without threat or promise. Do you want to talk to me about why you're here tonight and try to get to the bottom of this situation? I, w- I don't know if I'd have my attorney involved or not. I don't know. That's up to you. I'd like to discuss with you why you're here, but that's entirely up to you. Discuss it. You will? Okay. If you will, I need you to also sign right there. Did you get your water open? Yeah, I got it. And one other piece of paperwork to get out of the way. Obviously, you drove a vehicle down here. I think, uh, was it a Pontiac? Yeah, it was my car 05. Yeah, Grand Am. What we would like to do, Michael, is uh, do you have anything in the car? Weapons, drugs? Just my 140 caliber. That was, it's my gun. I've got my permit. I went over state line. I'm probably going to get in. <sighs> well, what we would like to do is get your consent to go out there and search the vehicle. If there's a weapon in it, we don't need to leave it in there. Somebody can break into it or whatever. So we would like to get your permission to go out there and, and retrieve anything out of your car that's not supposed to be in there. Yeah. And your car was brought down here at the Bowling Green Police Department. It's out back. Okay. What year is your car? You say 2005? Yeah. Patterson sits hunched over with his eyes averted, which is a defensive posture. He mutters under his breath, and there's a subtle note of whining in his voice. He's too worked up to think of a good lie, so he might be the type to admit everything without a fight. 
Pontiac Grand Am. Yeah, Grand Am GT. And what color is it? It's just silver. Two door, four door. Two door. That's the only thing they'll find in there is that web, my weapon and that, like my school bag, my black bag. And what will be in that bag? Just, just my just my few school books and. Signature right there, and then your printed name and address underneath that. I'll hold this so it won't move for you. What's your screen name? John Raven. John underscore Raven. 2000. Okay. And do you know the, remember the screen name of the female that you were chatting with online? Tatia something. Tatia underscore pet 13? I think so, yeah. Okay. When did you first start chatting online with her? Just today. Today? I don't remember what time it was probably. Seven o'clock, somewhere around there. If I tell you the log reflects about 4.39 p.m. this afternoon. 4.30, maybe yeah, a little sooner. And were you working today when you did that? or No. It you, was were, a, you were home? Yeah, I was online, yeah. Were you on a home computer? My laptop. What type of laptop do you have? Toshiba Satellite. And it's actually in the car with me. Your computer is in the car with yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you said Toshiba Satellite. Do you have satellite web it's service? For? Satellite wi uh, wireless is what it is. And who's that service through? I have Netgear right there at Couch. Netgear. Net Netgear. N-E-T-G-E-A-R. And I know you had a cell phone with you when you came in, too. Yeah. Did you chat on it on the way down, or did you call or talk? I don't think I chatted with her. You didn't inst instant message or anything when you were on the way down? I think I, did, I put, like, call me on there. I think that was the only thing I tried to get a hold of her with. I tried calling her, and then I couldn't get a hold of her, so I went through instant message on my phone and then tried getting a hold of her that way. Okay. Is the laptop the only computer that you have there at your house? You don't have a desktop or another I have laptop? a desktop, yeah, but I don't even use that thing anymore. What type of desktop is it? I don't even know. It was, it was my wife's. Where is it located in the house? It's, uh, it's right in my second, my storage room. The storage room is inside your house, so... Yeah. It's actually the second bedroom, but we don't we don't have anything else besides like crap in that room, all of my tools and stuff. And 
You said you were going through a divorce. Is, does uh, your wife still live there also? No. She's moving with, she's living with her mom and dad in Crown Point. Okay. Any, anyone else living there with you at this no, time? No, just me. Do you have any animals in the house, dog, no. cat? Fish. You said it's an apartment. Yeah. How many bedrooms are in the apartment? Just two bedrooms. Two bedrooms? Yeah. The questions have been fairly basic so far, barely touching on anything related to the case. Patterson is answering, but he's struggling to keep himself together. How long did it take you to drive down here today? A little over five hours. Five and a half. So that part of what you were saying out at the house was true? Yeah. And what was, what was your reason for coming down? I really didn't. I wasn't going to. Wasn't going to what? I wasn't going to come down here. I, you, you probably see on there on the conversations that I was weary of coming down here. What, what made you come? I mean, you, you know, now's your time to explain your side of the situation. Uh, you know, I'll be frank with you. I won't ever lie to you. And I expect the same consideration in return. And, you know, I'm going to ask you some questions that I'd like to have you answer. Why did you come down here tonight? The truth comes out in three, two, one. She's had a blowjob or something. Yeah, in, in your chats, you talk about her sucking your dick. Yeah. Patterson admits why he went to the sting house. So you had intentions to, to at least have oral sex with her. Yeah. And how old did she tell you that she was? She said going on 14. I think she's going to be 14 in February or something, I believe. Yeah. And you... You knew that wasn't right. I knew it wasn't. But yet you came. Do you think anything else was going to happen after you got here? Go let nature take its course? I was wary of coming in the house. I drove around for a little bit. I almost didn't come in. Have you chatted with other people online before like this? No. I mean, I've talked to people, you know, older, <laughs> but just friends, you know, I. What, what about other describe. other females? I'm sure you've chatted with other females. Online. Yeah, never this young. What What would you say would be the next youngest person that you've chatted with? 18 is the youngest. 18? Yeah, I never would think. Do you ever meet me. anyone else in person from your chats? One. How long ago was that? I met her a couple months ago. She's 20. And where did she live? She lives in Kokomo. Well, right now, Logansport with her mom and dad. In Logansport? Yeah, Logansport. I'm assuming it's Logansport, Indiana? Yeah, Logansport, Indiana. And you remember what her screen name was? Bad headache when they hit me against the ground. I can't remember. Or what her real name is. Her first name. Oh my god. Oh man. What is her name? When's the last time you chatted with her? Just call. She called me today. I, my mind is not here. They tased the crap out of me. Hit me against the floor. I can't. Well, you ran. I was standing there at the door. <laughs> I don't know 
don't even know. Patterson has admitted to everything, which is unusual. This may indicate that this is his first time doing something like this, and he has no experience and had not mentally prepared himself for getting caught. Usually, the longer a predator commits their crimes, the easier it is for them to justify their actions in their own minds. Oh, mine's not here. Well, if she, if you, she called you today, I mean, you had to know a name. Was chat room. That was a Yahoo, Yahoo chat room, yeah. Is that pretty much where you usually chat? Yeah. You say it was about two months ago? Yeah, pretty close. Anyone else? Just vaguely, that was, that was, she was the main person I talked to. Is she the only one that you met in person? Yeah. And how many, how many times have you met with her? Twice. I just met her parents the other day. So you went to where she was at? How far is Logan's port from where just you Just an live? hour away. You met her parents? Yeah. Mike, have you ever been in any trouble before other than what you told me earlier with the... Not even this crap. The, the policy violations and uh, you sound like you said a traffic ticket or something or... That was a traffic ticket that was just, they didn't even turn it in with the blue and red lights. Just, uh, back was it like unauthorized use of yeah, emergency equipment? Yeah, I wasn't or? supposed to have it in my car, my personal car. Um, back in 03, I had a, I had misdemeanor A. Stupid, fuck, I'm stupid now. Misdemeanor A, it was for uh, theft. I, I got a uh, bank card through on the mail. And it was all in my information. My address and everything, they gave, you know, bank, Citizens Bank, they gave me a pin code access to it all. I went to the ATM because I had a savings with them. Savings account, but I didn't have a checking. I, I thought that was for my savings, but I got stupid when I seen the balance. I got like twelve hundred. I I settled with the restitution, twelve hundred dollars from that. And uh, so the the card was actually on somebody else's account. It was yeah. It was the account number was to another person's account, but it was, went all to my name and everything to my address with the pin number. On the card, it had my you know my full name, Michael Joseph Pat Michael J Patterson on it, and that was. Basically, yeah. And that was in 2003, and you said... 2003. What was the, what was the final result of it? Misdemeanor A. It was a plea. I completed my probation and stuff. and Made restitution. Yeah. Paid all that back. You say it was what, about $1,200? Yeah. Were you on the police force then? No, that was... I just turned 21, 21, 20 or 21, I just turned. How, how long were you on the police force? Just three months. I did my pre-basic with Hebron Police, my pre-basic law enforcement academy. I did Yeah, my weapons qualifications and all that. How are you spelling Hebron? Handcuffs, H-E-B-R-O-N. And what, what were the dates that you were there? July to... July of 07 or... Yeah, 06? July of 07 to... The beginning of October... The end of August or the beginning of October? Let's put the end of uh, August. That was two months I was there. If it was that, July... Not here. Oh, 
Obviously, this is you in the picture here. Who are, who are the other people in there with you? My brother's standing next to me, my sister, and then his... That's my bro younger brother. That's his girlfriend there, my sister, and my older brother. Patterson had a decent job. He had a relationship with a woman in his own age range, which looked to be getting serious. The woman he was seeing lived an hour away. Patterson gave all of this up to drive five hours to meet a 13-year-old girl that he had only been talking to for a day. This may have been his first time, but it definitely wouldn't have been his last. Did you bring anything else with you? Like you talked about possibly bringing bringing a gift or bringing something. I didn't, I don't even, I, that's why when she said that, I didn't remember what she was talking about. I didn't say I was bringing anything. You, you didn't tell her you were going to bring anything? I don't think so. I can't remember if I, I don't think I did. Were you planning on spending the night? I wasn't planning for staying very long. Because I had to get up, I had to go to, uh, to possible do my group uh, project today because we have a midterm presentation tomorrow. Group project. By tomorrow, you mean Tuesday? Sunday. Like today, we were, I was supposed to go back up, back to home, and then hopefully got together with my group to practice our group presentation for Monday. Monday for tomorrow morning, yeah. For what type of class? My communications class. What year are you in at Purdue? I'm going part time. I only have 20 credit hours. So, first year, it'd barely be the first year, freshman year, just barely. Because to get a bachelor's degree with Purdue up there, I have to have 140 credit hours for four years. So, it's barely a freshman year. The, the desktop computer that's at your apartment, is there internet service hooked up to it? or mm, none of that. Wireless card or anything with it? No. You say it's an older computer? Yeah, it's an old tank clock. Mike, what are we going to find on your computer when we look at it? Is there going to be any child pornography? No, no. No. Going to be any adult pornography? Well, there's... From one of the chat rooms, I saved one picture from maybe two from a, an older lady she had in her little profile thing. It was from an older lady. I think she was one of those bots, you know, like a pretend person you talk to that put that crap in their profile. Mm -hmm. So I put that on there. I think I might have two pictures. That's it. Okay. What about DVDs, VHS tapes, no. anything like that at the, uh -uh. At the house? Uh -uh. Like what, I have DVD, you know, regular DVDs that I watch movies. Right, but I mean, what I'm talking about is, is any child or adult pornography. Oh, uh-uh. Nothing like that. Any drugs at your apartment? <laughs> no. Oh, damn. And you said Hebron's a population of about 3,000? 3, 3,000, that's what they said, yeah. Where's that located? Um, well, it's just uh, south, southeast of Crown Point, about 15 minutes. So it's, it's pretty far up, up into Indiana. Yeah. And if I understood you right, you came for oral sex. And that was it. Because she spoke up. She said it. You know, she, she wasn't my own. Oh, my God. Well, uh, she...
She didn't bring it up first, though. You brought it up first. Ask her if she'd ever had a boyfriend. Uh, yeah. Has she ever done anything with him? Uh, like, suck his dick. Would you do me? You, you recall those? Yes. Okay, speak up because yes. the, the, obviously the tape recorder can't see you shake your head. Yes. With everything he's already confessed, the case against Patterson is going to be pretty open and shut. They are still going to search his vehicle and computer to see if there need to be any additional charges, but his admission has made extra evidence less critical. And you've never done this with anyone else? No. We're not going to find any, any chats on your computer or anything with any other underage females? No. Did you have a webcam that you used or anything? No. Not going to be one with the desktop either? No. Mike, is there anything else that you can think of that you want to tell me right now concerning this situation? You know, I haven't had any type of dirty person like there, there's people out there. I knew I shouldn't have came down here. No, that would, you know, that would have probably been a good idea. Yes. And you did say it was a, a 2005 Pontiac? Yeah, I just that bought it, and I haven't had time to go over to the license branch because I traded in a 2003 Grand Am. It might still have my same, it does still have my same plate on it from that old three Grand Am. I just traded the, the car in on it. Okay. Where, where did you purchase your car? This 05? Yes. Team Chevrolet in Valparaiso. Team, T-E-A-M? Yeah, Team, yeah. Chevrolet. In Valparaiso, Indiana. It's about 15 minutes from the house, from the apartment. And you traded in a? 2003. The Grand Am SE. And you said you've not, you've not changed registration. You've not registered this. No, I haven't. This I was about ready to go this week. Coming up here probably tomorrow. So busy with my midterms, I haven't been over there to see a judge. Do you know who owned the car, the 2005, before you did? I didn't find out prior owner. The dealership had possession of it, but they sold it to me, but I don't know who had it before. Are you familiar with the name of... No. Well, that's the registration that the car is still coming back in. Yeah. And you bought it when? I can't remember the exact date. It was about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, so it was on a on a Wednesday. It's about, about two. Yeah, weeks. it was on a Wednesday about two weeks ago because my wife and I were getting that going at it. My ex-wife coming up. Sit tight, just half a second, and I'll be right back. All right. 
anything else that you can think of right now, Mike, that you want to tell me concerning this tonight? I mean, you guys have basically everything there that happened on the show. Well, I don't, you know, I want to make sure that you have every opportunity to tell your side of the story or explain anything that you want to explain. I'll sit here all night with you if that's what it takes. I don't want to. I don't want to cut you off. I screwed up. We've, we've pretty much covered it. I knew I screwed up talking to a girl that age. I knew. I'm not stupid. I'm not no fucking creep, but. All right. The time is now approximately 3.17 a.m. I'll be stopping the recording at this time. All right, Mike, what's going to happen now is you have to have your photograph made. It's going to be done right out here in the hallway. And then you'll be taken across the street to the Warren County Jail and lodged. The judge will set bond on you on your charge. I'm not that familiar with Bowling Green. I don't live here. I don't know whether he'll do it this morning, sometime today, or whether he'll wait and do it Monday. I hope he does. I have that midterm. Oh, my God. Do you have a home phone number or you just use your cell? My cell. My, my, you could call my... What's your cell number? My wife's number. And you want to list your wife as an emergency contact number? All right. Let me see if they're ready for you out here. On June 11, 2008, Michael Patterson was convicted of traveling in interstate commerce for the purpose of engaging in a sexual act with a minor. He received seven years in federal prison and 10 years supervised release. He also received three years and 10 months by the state of Kentucky. In 2011, Patterson represented himself in a civil lawsuit against NBC Universal Inc., asking for $40 million in monetary and punitive damages, as well as injunctive relief in the form of having all information about him taken off television and NBC's website. Patterson claimed that he was lured to the sting house and that they took advantage of his vulnerability. He also said that the slander and defamatory statements by NBC caused him mental and emotional stress as well as ruined his reputation. Patterson's complaint was devoid of factual allegations and his case was dismissed. Thank you for watching. If you like this type of content and want to support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description below. You'll be able to watch videos with zero ads and some that are too controversial for YouTube, and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Thanks again for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next video.